Okay, I'm doing something a little different today. Um, I'm Robin from Sparks of Divine Light Healing, and um, I'm going to do a little demo of our mystery school by broadcasting it on our new business page. So give me a second. I'm just going to share this video. Um, we are in the process of setting up a school. I have this mystery school going, um, and Lionel Anderson also has an adult, uh, an occult school that he's setting up as well. Um, we've just been kind of guided to do this. In this video, I'm going to be reviewing um, the Law of One, session one through four from book one. We're going to kind of recap it before we progress. Hang on one sec, I have one more group. All right, so we started this um, group. We had kind of a rough start. Um, we were using one material um, for the class, and then it kind of went kind of, it took kind of a wrong turn. And we discarded that material. We're now using the law of one and moving past all of this. Um, so we are taking new students. Um, there is a fee to be added to this group. Um, there's a one-time fee of $20, which goes to support um, our cause. So it's a really good um, class to get into. We just basically have done sessions one through four, and we're gonna move on to five actually this week. I'm gonna do the videos a little differently in the future. I'm gonna broadcast um, any video after this straight from the group, and literally I'll do one session at a time. So this is a lot of material to cover, um, but you guys should know I'm very familiar with the Law of One. This was my um, religion when I lived in Egypt a long time ago. And all of us lived in Atlantis and Egypt and are kind of paying off karma from back then, from when we did come and teach here. Um, so this material should really resonate with you guys, and there should be like a famili familiarity about it. Um, so this is really good to learn. Um, when I first woke up, um, I was immediately sent to the Law of One. And when I say sent, um, everything about... My entire life in the past few years has been divinely guided. I have gone back to following my intuition and following um, the universe, and it's really bringing me to some imag magical, amazing places. But the Law of One was pretty much my first stop. Here you go. Um, and it really helped trigger a lot of my own memory and brought back a lot of stuff for me um, because this book is really about all of us. So, um, and it's pretty amazing. This is channeled in the same year I was born, so it's pretty old material, too. It's been around for a while. Um, but yet yeah, is much more advanced than a lot of our current science, um, which has yet to even catch up with the law of one, but it was channeled, um, so many years ago. So I'm going to go over section one. Um, if you guys want, you can drop anything law of one related, oneness, unity, anything I'm talking about, go ahead and drop questions. Um, I'm a little disorganized cause I'm just getting into this, but, um, this school is going to be pretty amazing. So definitely check out our stuff. Um, section one, conscious channeling. Channeling from a conscious state. Um, we have a lot of channels around nowadays. It's kind of a topic in the spiritual community, right? This person's channeling who? This person, this person's channeling Pleiadians, whatever it is. Um, I see a lot of people channeling Archangel Michael. Um, we have to be careful with channeling. Um, and they even touch base on this, how it's really easy to um, start channeling positive entities and then they turn to negative um, based on what we're asking and what we're using this channeling for. Um, that's why with my work, I have to be so careful to be service of others all the time in my life. Um, so careful, like more than the average person. So a lot of us are channeling, we're becoming clear channels. Um, and they really do go over the importance of keeping your body a certain way. Um, they even said that they tried channeling before and it didn't work because the instrument, as in Carla, was not ready yet. Um, so let's go through this. Who is Ra? And they even say it. Ra is the messenger of Christ consciousness. Um, I actually channel live on my news videos all the time. Um, I'm channeling right now. I'm pretty much a channel all the time. Um, so for me, if I'm going to start to do like a video or something... I literally um, asked to be put in the light of Christ consciousness. We know that negative entities um, pretty much don't even like the word Christ. So I love throwing around words like Christ consciousness. And um, it really ensures what you're channeling is of the light. Um, Ra is a social memory complex made of many entities. Um, it's a soul group. 
And that's where we all are right now. We're a soul group too. I'm trying to merge back into one with my original soul group with all of you guys, which is pretty amazing. So Ra is not just one entity. It's actually a complete group of souls. Um, what is a catalyst? <laughs> we all know what this is. Um, it's a situation for growth, but it's an opportunity for a lesson. And the thing is, this can often be seen as negative. Any catalyst I had in my life seemed very negative at the time and kind of um, was designed to knock me down a few pegs. So sometimes these catalysts can be detrimental. They can be um, people coming into your life like a whirlwind and it just goes bad. Whatever it is, um, we perceive a lot of things as negative. And the thing is, we have to get rid of that positive, negative thinking and mindset and realize that we're all part of a divine plan and everything is actually perfect as is and going as divinely planned. So there really isn't anything negative. There are learning experiences here that you might not have enjoyed, but they were always for your growth. Um, what is a wanderer? Someone with a higher density soul that came here as a volunteer. That's what we all are, by the way. And I'm going to touch base on this. The thing is, is that we knew that we could get lost here. And I really did. Um, I was under a crazy sleeping spell, I would describe it as. Because, like, it really took to meeting my twin flame to snap me out of it and to wake me up. I'm not even joking. It was like being under some type of spell. Um, that's the best way to describe it. So, we really did run a risk of getting stuck here, forgetting our mission completely. And staying asleep the whole time and it's really happening because these numbers that they go into of wanderers are insane at this time um, so many people volunteered to come here to help this planet um, the objective is to forget oneself to learn um, basically this is a school and if we knew all the answers to the test um, it wouldn't really do us a lot of good so we have to forget to learn um, who we are and we are the wanderers we came here knowing there was a risk we could stay lost forever um, what is harvest Harvest is spoken of also in the Bible. Um, keep in mind, the Bible was written by archons, literally. Um, so there might be some truth in there, but there's a lot of fear and control in there, too. <laughs> so harvest is spoken of in a lot of um, texts, but it's spoken of as an ascension. I don't use the word harvest. I use the word ascension, but it pretty much means the same thing. It's when your soul graduates from one density to the next. And we are seeing a planetary ascension right now where many people are trying to graduate from the third dimension to higher ones. Keep in mind, um, while I may have like a sixth density soul, this is a third dimensional planet. Um, so most of the planet is still trying to graduate from the third dimension. That's why a lot of people might be, that are especially drawn to my videos, might feel alien here. You might really feel like you're somewhere else and you really might be from somewhere else. Um, what is alignment? <clears throat> alignment has to do with a person's polarity. Give me one second. I forgot to share this one place. Give me one sec. Wait a minute. All right. So what is alignment? Um, people talk about I'm out of alignment. Maybe someone's body is out of alignment. Maybe we're out of alignment with the universe. Alignment has to do with a person's polarity. Um, we're actually only, it's really simple. Um, this is why I really love the law of one. It breaks it down for you really easily. Um, I know it's written kind of awkwardly, but it's pretty easy um, if you're looking for truth. So we're sorted in two categories, service to self and service to others. It's really simple. And when we get harvested, um, that's how we're going to get sorted. I know that in the Bible, they tell you it's good and evil, and people will be sorted according to good and evil if you're bad or whatever. But that's not actually how, if there was some type of harvest, how it would come out. Um, we are sorted whether we're service to self or service to others. The people that are choosing to stay in the third dimension are service to self, and people that are residing in higher densities are service to others. It's really simple. Um, it's hard to get accurate channeling for these reasons, as I went over. Um, you'll notice in lesson one that Ra is very careful about the instrument. The instrument, that's us. I'm the instrument. My Twin Flames likes to say, when I'm really tired or depleted, this instrument needs tuned, and it's so accurate. Um, Carla is the instrument. As a channel, we have to be very careful. We're not depleting ourselves energetically. Um, it's very important to stay tuned properly. 
basically we're in a giant symphony which I'll go over later and we're each a note in that symphony so it's very important that we stay um, t in tune that we take care of our bodies because we really are in the physical here um, as well as the spiritual but we have to take care of our bodies because otherwise they even said it she wasn't ready until she was awake to be a channel um, they had tried using her before so it's very important in my own life that I'm staying charged up that I'm using my energy wisely if I have like a project to do I save enough energy for myself and I just kind of am very careful with my energy now um, but that's really needed <clears throat> Um, we talked about how the Martians came here and influenced our history. Um, this is when our planet was quarantined, and this really ties back to Atlantis as well, too, um, because we I don't want to get into it too much till later on. I believe they'll go into it more in the Law of One. Um, but many people still have that DNA, and it makes people very warlike. Um, before that, during Atlantis time, it was actually really peaceful and calm here, and we had the Guardian race here. And the Martians came here with an outer control. They built a Merkaba, came here, and then literally merged with humanity and kind of changed things, altered our history. Um, that's also what caused a pole shift because they had built an outer control Merkaba, which is where the Bermuda Triangle is, and it really threw things out of whack and opened up these basically portholes to lower dimensions. So the entire planet got reset from this as well. Um, but you're still seeing a lot of this DNA prevalent, and it's making people more warlike. Um, we touched base on the Wanderers. That's us. Most of the people incarnated here are wanderers that came to assist this planet with ascension. Um, I told you guys I have a sixth density soul. Of course, we've seen how easy it is to entangle ourselves karmically once we're here and asleep, living unconsciously because we forgot who we were. Um, we are covering how wanderers can easily become sick from the dimensional de differences of suddenly living in lower dimensions. Um, I see this all of the time as a healer. Um, a lot of you guys know me as a healer um, on here and I'm getting kind of in depth with everything going on. And I see a lot of people with solar plexus problems that are wanderers where we're just so empathic and we're just taking in everything like a sponge and not getting that energy out of our body and it's making people really sick. Um, Let's see, we, um, we, lear we learned how you learn and evolve rapidly on this planet. The reason why we come here, the reason why we would choose to come here is because we're evolving so fast. Um, I know we're in a space storm right now and a lot of you guys are feeling it. It's like we're in a blender right now. That's what the energy feels like, like you're in a blender. Um, and it's going to get more and more intense until the 10th. So this is a hard, um, a hard school for really badass warriors. So literally, will you do this? Because if we sat around meditating and chilling in places like Lumeria and Atlantis, we wouldn't evolve as rapidly. So we want to go down into these lower densities to evolve fast. Um, we learned about Bigfoot. We learned half of the third density entities on this planet are from Mars, um, are karmically tied here. A quarter are from the second density of Earth, and a quarter are from somewhere else. Um, this can make warlike energy between the groups. Um, absolutely. We discussed our higher self and how we have many lives going on in parallel universes. Um, literally, like the thing is with parallel universes is you won't be in these parallel universes as much once you become your higher self in the here and in the now. Um, so we have many lives going on, and then it kind of gets fewer and fewer. Um, our higher self is a gift you receive when you reach the sixth density, um, and it's actually a gift from ourselves in the seventh density. So it is our future self in the sixth density. But the thing with time is that there's only the now anyway. But while we are our higher self now, we still have to go through the same lessons to become our higher self without our higher self's help, um, because that really is a violation of free will. So the best thing you can do is tune into your higher self. Um, that's what I've done. I've actually merged with and became my higher self in the now. So I'm actually being my sixth density self in the third dimension um, here. So it is possible. Um, tune in. Ask your higher self to help show you dreams before you go to bed. Um, always connect with your higher self. Um, you can ask for healing from your higher self if you've learned your lessons on something, etc. 
Um, it operates from the future. This higher self is sort of like a map assisting the traveler. When you um, embody your higher self, a bridge between space slash time and time slash space is made. And literally the thing is, is that that's how I'm able to access future events in past events because I am my higher self, which is operating from somewhere in the future. Um, so it really, when you, um, when you become your higher self, you can have access to the Akash records and all sorts of densities and dimensions. Okay, we're moving on to session two. I know this is a lot of material to cover fast, so in the future, like I said, I will be breaking it down session by session. Um, anyone who wants to join the class still can. It'll be really easy. You'll be all caught up after watching this video anyway. This is everything we've covered so far. Um, so we pretty much just started. Um, and so we have, I've been posting each section written as well, and Shannon Marie has been posting the cliff notes. Um, so session two, we talk about the source or intelligent infinity, and that's what I like to think of God as. Um, so it kind of aligns with all of my knowledge anyway. Um, we talk a lot about where things began. Awareness happened first, infinity became aware, then the infinite one desired to experience itself, so then came the creator. The creator created space, then divided itself into many portions of itself. And this is what we each are. We are aspects of the divine experiencing itself and each other. Um, so when I love my twin flame, I'm really loving an aspect of God. So if I want to get close to God, I'm not going to look for it in books or out there. I'm going to be nicer to my kids or my twin flame, and I'm going to love more. Um, session, section three, we cover holographics and fractals. We both live, we live in both a holographic universe and a fractal universe. Um, the universe is really complex. Um, Sparks likes to say, I might know this much, but the universe is like that. Like it's really complex here. Um, so we're going to touch base on that. But you can really think of it kind of like a movie, a movie projector or virtual reality. I like to think of it as a virtual reality computer program we live in. And um, we talked about the patterns that make up the logos or love. Um, we learned that the universe works sort of like a giant symphony that we're all notes in. Um, the definition of density is similar to light and sound vibrations. Um, we learned that the color plays a big part in our universe, a huge part. There are different spectrums per densities um, and amazing things that we just can't see because we only have limited um, third dimensional sight. I'm beginning to be able to see um, things all around us that are pretty spectacular and amazing. Um, we discussed the ley lines or the many force fields of the earth in their geometrical precise web. Um, we saw that early on earth was susceptible to being unbalanced. Hence a lot of the ancient structures being built like the pyramids. And this ley line energy is amazing. I'm obsessed with energy as a lot of you guys know. I'm an energy worker. Hey, so I'm always trying to optimize any kind of energy that I can use to pour back into the collective. Whether it be um, energy from natural events like rainstorms, um, waterfalls, etc. Or just energy, source energy, whatever it might be. I'm obsessed with it. Um, so a lot of people like Tesla knew that. He was experimenting in Colorado with this ley line energy and any of these structures like Stonehenge, the pyramids, they're all each on one of these ley lines. And literally it is to harness ancient energy. Um, in Egypt, they actually use that pyramid. They use sound, um, water and crystals to generate a natural electricity. It was like a power plant um, and it would generate uh, free energy, which is pretty amazing and spectacular. Um, these were civilizations that were a lot more advanced than us. And they went over how the pyramids were built with thought from a higher dimension as well. Sorry, I lost my place. Hang on. Um, so all of these structures are on these ancient ley lines. And most of them did generate some type of electricity or power. Um, that was pretty amazing. Um, we learned that these energy points um, have been shifting. The entire planet shifting. We know this, right? The electromagnetic field of our planet is shifting. And we know that. Um, we're seeing the poles reverse. We're seeing crazy things happen. That's what I'm getting ready for. That's why I came here. I can't wait. I'm real excited about it. Um, this is what I'm counting on. We learn we are influencing these streams by becoming love and light. Yes, um, I, I don't want to pull out my little map of the world and then, you know, we're all lighting it up. But um, I might have to, maybe next video. But literally, we are lighting up the grid. We each are a point on that grid. Um, so this is the first time um, ever that this grid's actually been turned on and used. It's never even been turned on. So it was made a really long time ago for all of us to activate and turn on. So for the first time ever, we're actually making um, ourselves available to this energy and becoming the grid. Anyone can open the gates 
to intelligent infinity by using the natural laws of the universe or seeking healing. You can become a living channel for love and light to utilize this energy. Um, basically, this is what I'm into, uh, opening chakras, kudalini energy, things of this nature. Um, anyone um, can access this stuff. It's not like I'm special in any way or whatever. Anyone can, um, literally. We learn thought form entities feed upon fear. Some exist in the astral and some feed on fear. I think this class learned really up close and personal all about that too. Um, so these are thought form entities. And we know that they influence our thinking and uh, generate lots of negative thinking. So um, we've had that lesson right off the bat up close and personal. Um, we learned that we should be living in the now and trying to find the love in every moment. Um, in every minute, there's love, literally all around us. That's what I'm starting to be able to see would be the uh, source energy particles all around us. And it's pretty amazing, and it makes me feel really loved and special and just mind-blown at how vast this energy is and how it is um, guiding and leading all of us in such a loving way. Um, you should see the Creator in everything and everyone, and that's where I'm at. I'm trying to see everyone as divine. Um, I know that's easy with some people, but we have to start treating everyone um, like we would the Creator. Everyone, even your low vibe parents, your relatives, whatever. And if you can't, just get rid of toxic people. Um, not everyone's going to come with you on this journey, and that's fine. Um, as you fall out of alignment with some people, you'll fall more in alignment with other people. Um, we went over how meditation is how we expand our awareness. Um, yeah, I have to meditate every day um, because I tell people that when I go to bed at night, that will recharge me. Great, but I need to charge myself with cosmic energy, and that's how I tune in personally. Um, the best way to be of service is of love. Um, we're going to cover this a little bit in depth too because I really like this and this is where a lot of people are at with their awakening too. So the best way to be of service is love. Radiating love is the best way to be service of others and that's what I do. I'm radiating love and healing energy. So just watching this video, I'm completely healing you guys, replacing your vibes with good ones. You'll get off of here feeling amazing, great, recharged. Um, but I want you guys to learn how to tune in yourselves for that energy. Instead of coming to me for that energy, when you wake up, go right to source. Tune in. Refill your energy. Um, so radiating love is the best way to be service to others. We wake up and we want to help everyone. Save the world. There are starving people here. There is war. There is crazy stuff everywhere. There are reptiles eating children. We could go on and on and on, right? But we're not actually ever going to change the world. And that's part of our lessons. Um, I want to. I don't even know where to insert this, but... Literally, um, I a lot of my journey was like I would always screw up my life by trying to help others. <laughs> a lot of my lessons were about not stepping in and helping other people, which I didn't understand then, but now I really have a good grasp of how because I would just really karmically entangle myself in situations I wasn't really doing any good, and now I get why. Um, we must be aware everyone else is you. So to help someone else, it actually helps you. Um, I would say the best way to help people would be to send them love and healing energy um, from afar. We had to be respectful that people chose their whole lives before they came here, even their lessons. So even those lessons people are crying about and complaining about, they chose that and they need it for their soul growth. So if you step in and save someone, <laughs> they get past their lesson for that minute. But guess what? They'll just get the same lesson over and over and over until they finish it. So we can't step in and do other people's lessons for them. And that's part of wisdom. That's where wisdom comes in. And really having that true knowledge of when we should insert ourselves and when we shouldn't. Um, so we learned that we keep having the same lessons till we complete them. So be careful that you're not messing up your situation um, to help someone when they're just going to have to repeat the same lesson later. You have to watch and you have to send love and healing energy, but you have to let people complete their lessons on their own. It's kind of like my twin flame told me when I woke up, I can't do your lessons for you. Um, I can't help you in any way. You have to do it. So we should lead by example. We should send love and healing energy because divine love heals everything. Um, so we have to stop trying to save people from their lessons. It's very counterproductive. It just messes us up and people choose, chose those lessons for a reason. So, um, they even talk about there's people starving, so you want to give them food, but then they're just going to have the same situation after that. They have to learn how to do it on their own. Um, that's part of what we're doing here, unfortunately. 
Um, we learned it's very hard to change your polarity from a negative one to a positive one. Um, service of self is negative and service to others is positive. I did it. Um, I'm the one who has to say I did all of this and you guys can too because my life, um, I created such a such a mess unconsciously that literally I did start from rock bottom and if I can change my whole life and do this so can you guys I don't care what your situation is I had a service of self um, negative polarity it's very easy to do very easy to do in this matrix a little bit harder to be service to others so I did change my polarity but the longer that you wait the harder it will get and eventually you do have to change your polarity um, you can ascend in the negative path but you will have to feed on others energy forever like if you ascend to the negative, to the service of self path, you will not have that connection to source and you will always need to feed on someone else's energy. So it's very important that we're connecting to source for that energy, that we're becoming service of others and having a positive polarity. Um, real quick, I'm going to put in here too, they talked about the importance of having that negative and positive polarity. We're both. You, it's like a battery. You wouldn't have a charge without the negative. So I know a lot of people want to just be positive and ignore the negative. Um, they're not going to have that charge they need. We're kind of like batteries. Um, so that's how it works. Like me and my twin flame came together. I had a negative polarity. He had a positive one. And our charge changed into something else. Our chemical consistency actually changed. Um, we learn the importance of using grounding as the creator enters from the feet and moves upward. That's why I try to go outside. I try to go outside barefoot, try to get that source energy in me. I like to have the sun shine down on me, go out, get some earth energy, etc. Um, we learn the importance of that. We learned about free will and how we have to respect one's free will in helping others or we cause blockages. They went over the, um, I can't even say it right, evangelicals, uh, evangelical religion, um, how they're trying to go help people and interfering with free will and they're just trapping themselves here karmically. So I know we want to go save the world. We have to respect that people are um, on their own lessons and that all we can do is lead by example. Um, focus on your own life and show people, look, I'm doing great. Do you want to come to me and ask for help? Okay. But we have to respect that if people aren't asking that we can't violate their free will it will just block ourselves we learned about dreams and how the unconscious mind does not use words um it uses concepts and images when we telepathy we're not using words you're going to think of images um to send someone that's how it works best anyway i know when i do it with my twin flame so you're going to think more like images um so it's much like telepathy we learned how um, much work we do in the dream realm. I could tell you guys that. Um, I do most of my work in the dream realm, not even this realm. I do something completely different there because I'm very um, I'm multidimensional like all of you guys. So we have a lot going on in a lot of different places. Um, we even do a lot of healing and working on those blockages there. Um, we learned love and having an open heart, ch heart chakra is what pierces the veil. Um, and guess what? The veil is ego. Um, so when you recognize everyone is the creator, you'll open your heart chakra. Um, you have to start to see love in everything and everyone. I know a lot of people will still say their life sucks and blah, blah, blah. We had to get out of that negative programming and see everyone as divine. Open your heart chakra. Um, and I hate to tell you there's a lot of sociopaths on this planet. And all a narcissist is is someone with a blocked heart chakra. So we have to open our heart chakra to have compassion and empathy. Um, we must open all of our chakras and become one with the intelligent infinity. That's where I'm at. I've actually merged with God in my twin flame and it's pretty amazing. Um, and uh, this will dissolve all of the illusions and it will make you service of others. And this is a state of consciousness that will produce the most amazing bliss. A lot of you guys can see I can glow. I'll be like shining, lit up like a Christmas tree. It feels so beyond amazing, so peaceful. Um, I can't even begin to describe it. Um, we must respect people's lessons, again, how I went over that. Um, so remember, these lessons are for people's evolution. So when we interfere, they just do the same lessons again. Um, wisdom is understanding. Love is all we can give and still be respectful of these individual lessons. Um, so that's why I say energy and love are my currency, and they really are. Um, I can't really help with your lessons, but I can pour love and energy into you guys to try to heal you. Um, we learned about Kudalini. This is a meeting place of cosmic and vibratory understanding. Um, everyone should be aware that the serpent represents Kudalini energy. We see it in medical symbols everywhere, occult symbolism, whatever. The Bible, Adam and Eve. <laughs> um, we learned about the power of meditation and visualization. 
Um, and really, that's the first step to creation. Um, the creator, they even say this, isn't so much into creation. We're supposed to be doing that. Um, we're co-creators. We're supposed to be helping here. Um, we talked about enlightenment, which is being completely open to intelligent infinity or having all of your chakras open. Um, we talked about Jesus being from the fourth density and his healing work he was doing. Um, those that heal usually have higher density souls. Um, the gate to intelligent infinity can only be opened when an understanding of, um, of the in streamings of intelligent infinity is open to the healer, which is so true. Um, we cannot heal others until we completely heal ourselves and work on ourselves first. Um, we learned about how we come in balance and if we attempt to heal in that way except through the law of one it can be detrimental um there are other ways people are healing which is not through intelligent infinity um which are not good usually um so just be aware of that um when you're picking out your healers or trying to become a healer um at a certain point you have to follow the law of one um literally you can make it to the fifth density but if you want to make it to the sixth and above you have to subscribe to the law of one um, we learned about how you have to really discipline the body to be a healer, but also the mind and the spiritual, which is so important, um, literally. I don't think people realize that uh, the type of lifestyle me and my twin flame are living to be able to heal others. We have to really purify our energy all the time. Like that's what we constantly are working on, purifying our energy. And I'm not even at the most pure state. I'll get there one day. Um, so I just keep working at it all the time and I'm getting purer and purer. But it's very hard to do that. I'm going to see if you guys have any comments on this. Um, if you guys have anything law of one that I just covered. It's hard not to interfere with your children. Um, yes, it's very hard, especially older ones like teenagers, um, you know, a little bit older, not so much the younger ones. So hard. Are you kidding me? Um, but really, they're just going to do the opposite of what you tell them. Um, so you might want to either get adept at reverse psychology um, so that you can try to influence them that way or just show them your love and support unconditionally. We're here to learn unconditional love. So our children are the hardest lessons. They're always going to be more evolved than us, um, but they're on different opposite lessons as us. And that's how we learn and grow. Most kids have opposite um, horoscope signs as us, too. And that's really how we learn from them because we're really polar opposites. Now, the goal is to keep that. I see when like people glow when they're pregnant. Now, the goal is to keep up that glow, but have it be um, from source energy kind of glow. Um, I know people can get real excited about getting married, having kids, and then that shine kind of wears off. Um, so go for the authentic stuff. Tune in, meditate. Let's see. No cards. There are definitely no cards. This is something different. Um, these are from my notes. I am obviously doing a demo on mystery school. We're studying the law of one sessions one through four. Um, if you guys have any questions about anything I covered, go ahead and type them. Um, the law of one is a book. You can find it online. The PDF is free. Um, we're studying it in my class. If you guys want to be added, um, we have a donation fee of $20 to be added to the class. It's in a group on Facebook. And if you guys have any questions, let's see. I was just recapping it. Yes, I'm a healer. I can't, I'm trying to find the questions. They're kind of slow. Give me a sec. I guess I'll let you guys go. I don't really see um, a lot of substantial questions. If you guys want to drop questions anyway, um, in the description below, like I'll go back and answer them. Um, but definitely um, like the page that I'm broadcasting this from and check it out for details on how to um, join Mystery School. And I'll be um, recapping chat lesson five. I'll be putting up session five and I'll be recapping it by next week. Um, so study your law of one. Uh, stay attuned to law of one frequencies and practice being one with everyone. And sending you guys all love and light. Namaste.